Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Blue Marble Riders, wherever you are. I hope you're having a great day. Today's vlog is going to be about custom bikes. What is a custom bike? And the reason behind that is because, well, it's because of two or three things. One, I was riding into town going shopping the other day and I pulled into a car park and noticed on my left a very attractive bike caught my eye. I had seen the owner sort of uh, sitting down with a backpack there and walked across to him. And there was a very nice young man, about late uh, 20s, with a carburetor in his hand. And I thought, that is so cool. That's something you don't see every day these days. Uh, at least I don't, uh, in this sort of instant gratification culture. And not only that, he's, uh, he's sitting with his uh, mesh suit in his backpack, uh, right next to a gorgeous, fully customized bike. So I'll get back to him in a minute, because I think that's an important part of this story. But it got me to thinking, what is a custom bike? Is a custom bike something where you, you can buy a bike and then you just add off-the-shelf parts to it? Much like I did with my W650 years ago. I took that bike and I added a, uh, a VD Classic, uh, I know, great, great name, eh? VD Classic French custom cafe seat to it. I changed all sorts of bits and bobs on it and it looked like a completely different bike, but I didn't actually do anything to the engine. I didn't weld anything onto it. I didn't change the headstock, upgrade the forks, any of that stuff. So in my opinion, it's not really a custom bike. It's a modified bike, much like this uh, Z900 RS is a modified bike. I've, I've done some mods on it, but it's still essentially stock. I've just bolted things onto it, cosmetics. So my question is, what is a custom bike? And for that, I decided to uh, scout around and look around. And most people seem to agree a custom bike, a truly custom bike is something where you make some real mechanical changes to it. And you do it uh, either for function or you do it for form. And so in my eyes, uh, one of the most famous custom bike, aftermarket custom bike manufacturers out there is Deus Ex Machina. They started off in Australia, they've got places all around the world now, and I've often looked at quite a few of their bikes and thought, yeah, oh wow, lovely, what a great job. What a great job they did on the uh, first W650s, whether they bobbered them, whether they trackered them, whether they cafeed them, and I'll slip a few pictures up right about now-ish. They just did an awesome job on them and really did fabricate and change. They, you know, they changed the tank, but uh, they didn't just buy an aftermarket tank, they actually fabricated the tank themselves, and that's an important point. They also changed certain parts of uh, swing arms, subframe, all sorts of different things on that bike were, were changed. They've added some market parts and some they've fabricated themselves. But what they've come up is, is basically a homogenized bike. It's, it's got some parts from other bikes on it. It's got some aftermarket parts and it's got some fabricated parts. And for me, that's a truly custom bike. Okay, now some people will build their bikes up from the ground and literally make their own frames as well. I'm not technologically advanced enough to do that. One, my welding skills while I'm doing them and they're coming along for the purposes of one day making a custom bike, uh, two years from now, I would like to do that. And I'm, I'm scouting around to see what sort of uh, bike I'm gonna start with, but more on that in a minute. Two, I don't think, uh, like I said, I trust my welds or my uh, geometry, my frame geometry. So there are some people who are good at that, but for me, a custom bike also includes a bike that you buy and chop. You make some changes to it, real changes to it, not bolt-on handlebars, bolt-on mirrors, bolt-on fairings, but actual chops. So back to Deus, I was horrified to find what they are now in some cases. Now I don't want to tar all of Deus Ex Machina with the same brush, but some of the most popular customs they've been doing in the past few years really shocked me, including the custom they did on this bike. This bike they called the goose and first of all i took a look at it and thought it looks reminiscent of something what is it but it, above all it looks really ugly and i'm going to go back to what is a custom bike for me a custom art house like deus ex machina i mean they don't race the bikes these aren't functional bikes they're art bikes they're bikes to ride but they're bikes based on looks and so if you're going for that then why are you producing something you call the 
goose and they did a Z900RS and I'll flash some pictures up in a minute and I took a look at it and thought yes it does remind me of the Mad Max goose but only vaguely. I really liked Jimmy Goose's main force police goose bike that he had, the KZ1000. That was a good looking bike, it was integrated, it looked good and they'd made some changes to it but nothing radical. But Deus Ex Machina came out, they saw the Z900RS and for some reason they thought that is what we'll base it on. So why would you take something like this it's, it, and slap on a fairing that really doesn't resemble the original Mad Max Goose fairing. It, it's all angular, it's quite bizarre with what I would call sort of soup strainers attached to it. There's sort of this mesh, but it's not a really pleasant mesh. It's more of the sort of, uh, well, I'll pour my soup through it and, and, and strain off the mushrooms, which I don't want in it. it. Looks disgusting. I'm sorry, but you take something like this and you do something like that to it and yeah, I don't, I'm not sure there are many Z900RS owners who can look at that and say, yeah, I want, I want to do that to my bike. Now, admittedly, instead of uh, MFP, or was it Main Force Police? That's right. Instead of MFP on the, on the tail, they've used a bit of humor and put KMA on there. And if you're not sure what that stands for, you might want to look it up. And I got that. But yeah, I just, you know, I thought, well, this must be just a one-off. But no, shock among shocks, another bike I quite like the look of because it reminds me of the present day Dakar bikes and I think it's a functional bike is the Yamaha Tenere 700 and lo and behold yes they've done a custom of that and they based this on Cyril Nouveau's XT500 from I think it was the 1980 Paris Dakar they have customized this bike and this bike is an even worse travesty in my opinion not because of what it looks like I mean I'm going to be frank again for me, and I know this is subjective, for me this is but ugly. There are some periods you shouldn't go back to. And the 1980 Paris Dakar is, you know, those bikes were nothing of beauty. They were pure function. So why would Deus go along and, uh, being, a, being a form custom builder, go along and try to recreate something like that? Now I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments what you think. I was struck by one how ugly this thing was how do you take a, a Tenere which is not the prettiest bike on the planet for the class of bike that it's in I find it to be quite a good looking bike and they've stuck on what looks to me like a, an IMS or in a service tank uh, maybe they crafted it themselves but it really does look like one of those over capacity tanks They've then used, I kid you not, truly a service Bark Busters. They've then bolted on a stock Yamaha bash plate, extreme knobbly tires, and an SC Project muffler. How can you call that custom? Now, admittedly, they have changed the shocks. They've had some Olins at the back, and they've extended the fork length by three centimeters, and no wonder the size of the tank on there is going to dictate you need to do that at the front, but they've called that a custom. It's a ripoff, and it's certainly not a custom. Any back garage hack mechanic could do that. I could do that. It all brings me back to what is custom, and what is custom in your opinion? I'll go back to that uh, young guy I met. I didn't actually ask his name, but we spent a good 15, 20 minutes chatting, and he allowed me to take some pictures of his bike. And this bike was a 1980 750 Virago. He'd taken the 750 engine out of it, put the 1000 in it, not the 1100, the 1000. He'd then chopped the rear subframe. He'd put some R1 forks on it, changed the headstock angle, and then found another rear wheel and put that on the front. Now, he'd relaced it, obviously, to get rid of the hub and all of that stuff. And when you see the finished product, it's a thing of beauty. Absolutely beautiful and fully customized. Yeah, I tip my hat to you because as far as I'm concerned, Deus have lost the plot if this is what they're putting out now. I know they sell their bikes at a loss and that's why they have the clothing line that they do. It's sad if Deus have stooping to that level now where they just put it bolting on aftermarket parts, calling it uh, custom and riding on their own coattails, uh, their own history of producing good bikes. Anyway, let me know what you think in the, in the comments below. Uh, let me know about any customs. I mean, there are some beautiful custom Z900 RS, the Japanese actually, of course, because it's their bike and they 
they perhaps appreciate it more than anybody, have done some wonderful work on the Z900RS. But there are other bikes out there that people have uh, done work on. And what I am looking to do is pick up a cheap bike in the next two years, sub $2,000, maybe maybe even less than that, with a good good running engine and uh, need some uh, TLC, etc., etc. And then I'm going to start to chop and weld. Your ideas on the base bikes would be great. What's out there that you think's worthwhile? I certainly never, ever contemplated a Virago, and this really opened my eyes. There are all sorts of different engine configurations that would actually look very good on a custom. I've always fancied motor guzzies, so uh, there is something to go for as well. But uh, I thought the Virago looked particularly nice, the V-twin, the inline V-twin rather than side to side. It just looked very elegant the way it was done. Thank you very much for listening once again, folks. Let me know your thoughts, your comments. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And until next time, this is the Blue Marble Rider, out. Once again, thanks for watching, everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Marble Rider, out.